We begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you very much, Lord, for bringing us back into this school of the word, deepening on the Psalms. Thank you also for being present always with us, as the song say, beside us, taking us by the hand to lead us to you again, to lead us to be open and present so that we can hear, listen to your word once again and allow you to, to be the one who gives us the strength, the peace and what, what we need in our journey of life. And so Holy Spirit, come and help us to be present and be open to listen to the word of God tonight. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The Father, Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. So welcome back again, everyone. Just in case I forgot to uh, introduce myself. My name is Sister Monica and I'm one of the Baroom Day missionaries. And tonight I'll be the one breaking the word. So as we know that we are in... We are deepening on the Psalms in this series of the School of the Word. And today is our fourth session. How time flies, right? And today's Psalm will be Psalm 120 or in another version of the Bible, it may be Psalm 121. So basically, it's the whatever the song says, that's the Psalm. Huh? Okay. And also, as we have been reminded through the, the sessions in this Psalm series, the book of Psalms is the book of prayers prayed by the people who journey in faith. So in each Psalm, we see a sincere prayer expressed by the psalmist in various situations of life that he or she experienced at that moment. And tonight's Psalm, Psalm 120, is a prayer of blessing for pilgrims. That's the context of the Psalm. So it is a psalm of prayer to bless and pray for the pilgrims' safe travels and passage throughout their journey. And some of us may think, listening to this context of the psalm, hmm, but we are not going on pilgrimage anytime soon, are we? Or maybe maybe some of you will, then, then this psalm is perfect tonight, no? So if we are not going on, it, on any pilgrimage anytime soon, does this psalm still relate to us? Well, this psalm still relates to us because at the end of the day, life is a pilgrimage where we undertake a journey walking through the different moments and experiences in life until we reach the end, home, God. In this prayer for life's journey or life's pilgrimage, then the psalmist begins by inviting us to look up to God. It says, I lift up my eyes to the mountains. From where shall come my help? My help shall come from the Lord who made heaven and earth. We are invited to look to God, to fix our eyes on him as we walk, especially in the times when we need help. And it's an important invitation because it makes us to reflect. Where do we fix our eyes in our times of need? Where do we look? To whom do we look? For some of us, the temptation in our times of need is to look everywhere else except at God. We forget about God and depend solely on other securities like our own self, in our own limited understanding or capabilities, or maybe in material things, like uh, in our savings, in our investments, insurance, or maybe things like Google, right? The digital things now, or AI now with chat GPT and don't know what else, meta AI, no? Or we may look at other people, real people, not talking about AI, no? Real people, who may be good or better than us, but still, nonetheless, human and not divine. For others, in our times of need, the temptation is to turn our eyes away from God and simply focus on the problem, on the difficulty, which then brings us more worries, more anxiety, more obsession, 
and no calm, nor solution. Hence, the psalmist's invitation at the very beginning of his prayer of blessing is look to God. Look to God from where shall come our help. Because that's what we find when we turn our gaze to Him. When we look at God, we discover that God is looking at us. Now, to some of us, the phrase God is looking at us may sound scary, right? Or frightening or overwhelming. Why? Maybe because we imagine God looking at us with judgmental eyes ready to catch any little mistakes or carelessness that we have and judge it as a failure and then punish us. But that is not the look of God that Jesus has shown us in the gospel. In the gospel, Jesus shows us that when God looks at us, he looks at us with the gaze of the father of the prodigal son in Luke 15. The father who gazes at the horizon day after day, anxiously wondering and waiting for his son to come back. The father who saw his son from afar and out of joy ran to him so that he could welcome his beloved son with the embrace and the kiss of love. In the gospel, Jesus shows us that God looks at us with the same gaze that Jesus looked with at the rich young man in Mark 10. It was with a deep look of love. A love that doesn't reject the young man who at that moment couldn't respond yes to Jesus' invitation to follow him. The look of love was given before the young man needed to respond. Jesus shows us that when God looks at us, his look is one that is full of love. And when we look at God, we encounter that gaze of love that he has toward us. A gaze of love that is never turned away from us, even in times when we are not looking at him. And that's why the psalmist can continue proclaiming that God sleeps not nor slumbers. And he repeated this twice. God sleeps not, nor slumbers, for he is your God. In another translation, it says, God is your guardian. God is your guardian gives the image of when someone is accompanying a loved one who is sick and warded overnight in the hospital. Perhaps we have experienced this before. Perhaps we have experienced this either as the patient or the one accompanying sleeping on the makeshift bed or sofa, right? And in this scenario, usually the one accompanying rarely falls into a deep sleep because subconsciously there is an attentiveness to the slightest noise or movement that the patient may make. And as the patient, we feel secure and at ease that there is someone right beside us to help us when we need it. And this is how God is toward us. His love for us makes him to be attentive to our every sound and movement, to our needs. His love for us doesn't allow him to sleep nor to slumber in case we need him. His love for us makes him to be our guardian who guards us faithfully at each step of the journey. And therefore, we are called to look at God, our guardian, so that we can see and experience how God guards us in our walk. And the psalmist continue. The psalm says, The Lord is your guard and your shade. At your right hand he stands. By day, the sun shall not smite you, nor the moon in the night. In our journey, we are not exempt from hardships, difficulties, and sufferings, which are part of life. And there are times when these troubles, like the sun and the moon, 
mentioned in the psalm may overwhelm us, may make us lose the strength and power to walk, to continue the journey. And in these times, when we are tired, exhausted, when the troubles seem to never end, when it seems too hard to continue the journey, God guards us from the temptation of giving up. He stands at our right hand, at our side, and calls us to look at him. Not because he will remove all challenges and difficulties in life, but so that he can give us his own strength and help us take another step, even if it is a small one. To take another step forward and continue the walk in hope, not alone, but with him. And the psalm continues in its last verses by proclaiming another way that God guards us in our pilgrimage of life. The Lord will guard you from evil, the psalmist says. He will guard your soul. At times, these evil can come from outside, like what we mentioned already, like the inevitable sufferings in life. But in Mark's gospel, Jesus also talks about another kind of evil, those that come from inside. And he says, For it is from within, out of a person's heart, that evil thoughts or intentions come. Greed, envy, arrogance, slander, prejudices, etc. No? Similarly, we are not exempt from these two. Because many times, our love toward our neighbor is not perfect yet. But it is precisely when we find ourselves lacking in love that we are called to turn our eyes and fix them again on God. When we look to God for help, Jesus shows us his own compassion to stop our slander or prejudices. When we look to God for help, Jesus speaks to us and shares his own joy and contentment to move us away from our envy and greed. When we look to God for help, Jesus reminds us of his own humility and love to guard us from our arrogance. In looking at him, our minds and hearts are slowly, little by little, turned away from the evil that hinders us from walking and growing in the path of love. And so tonight, we have time to stop and pray. Let us take this psalm and read it slowly, pausing at the word that strikes us, and from there, enter into dialogue with God, turning our eyes to look at Him, not just focusing on the challenges or our lack of love, but focusing on God. And tonight, in the silence of our prayer, let us find God looking at us, not with judgmental eyes, but with a great and tender love for us. Let us find God looking at us just as the Father looked at His own beloved children. Let us find Jesus looking at us as his dear friends. And in prayer, as we bring to God the challenges that we perhaps are now facing in life, let us find him standing at our side, giving us his presence, strength and calm. Or perhaps in prayer tonight, as we tell Jesus about our challenges of lack let us listen to him as he shares with us his love and his endless patience in teaching us how to love anew. In fixing our eyes always on God, like what the psalmist invites us to do, little by little, may we be blessed in our pilgrimage of life as we live and walk together with God, our faithful guardian. And so we will now have the time of silence 
the passages will be flashed on the screen and we will come back later to end together. <laughs>